Hello and welcome again this week to our readings and reflection for Palm Sunday 2020. It's lovely that uh, there are so many of you uh, watching this video. Uh, I hope that you are finding this uh, helpful uh, in your walk with God. Our first reading today is from the Psalms and it's Psalm 118 and I'm going to read from verse 19 to 29. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords, up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our New Testament reading is from Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 21, starting to read at verse 1. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfil what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Very recently, I saw a post on social media asking people to share their favourite or most helpful Bible verses. At first, this sounds like a lovely thing to do, and I suspect that the motive for it was very good. However, as I commented on the post, there can be a danger with taking just one verse from the Bible. Without a context to the verse, it's all too easy to make the Bible say pretty much whatever we want it to say. And sadly, there are many who use it in just that way. Does it still mean what you think it means when you look at it in context? Having said that, there is a wonderful verse in scripture that tells us that God knows the end from the beginning. Here it is from the book of Isaiah the prophet in its proper context. This is Isaiah chapter 46 verses 8 to 11. Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning 
and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose, calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my counsel from a far country. I have spoken, and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed, and I will do it. This short passage reminds us that with God nothing happens by chance. Rather, he has planned everything out in advance from the very beginning of time. It reminds us to stand firm and remember what he has revealed and promised to us in the Bible. God states that he will accomplish all his purposes or plans. It doesn't necessarily mean that we will always understand them or even like them, but God always does what he has planned to do. In a very real sense, that is exactly what our New Testament reading from Matthew's Gospel is showing us. God has made a plan long ago and had proclaimed what he would do hundreds of years before through the prophet Zechariah in chapter 9 and verse 9. When Jesus sends his disciples off for the donkey and its colt, it's not a spur of the moment thing. Rather, it's something that God had planned several hundred years before. We don't know the details because the Bible doesn't tell us. Yet the donkey's owner let them take the animals, seemingly without any protest. As Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that very first Palm Sunday, in this particular way he was fulfilling a prophecy spoken several hundred years before. In some parts of the church today, people still speak about prophecy happening now. Some have even claimed that they prophesied the coronavirus in advance. However, when you look into what they said, it is extremely vague and often at least partly wrong, if not completely wrong. The standard for biblical prophecy is very different. In the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, the standard is set out in the law. If a supposed prophet says something and it does not happen, what they say has not come from God. Also, even if what they do say comes to pass, but it tells the people to worship foreign gods, then it is still not from God. The punishment for falsely prophesying was for them to be stoned to death. There is nothing in scripture that says that the standard for prophecy has changed over the years. Even if we don't stone false prophets today, we should certainly ignore what they say and rather focus on God's word that he has clearly revealed to us in scripture instead. Zechariah prophesied something that came to pass on that first Palm Sunday in great detail that word was certainly from God. It pointed the people towards God's chosen Messiah, his son, Jesus. Returning to our Matthew reading, I think we should also notice the way in which the crowd shouted out in words of praise taken directly from Psalm 118. In a sense, they're recognising the significance of Jesus' entry into the holy city, perhaps even being inspired by God's Spirit to use these specific words from the psalm. Yes, they are taken from a psalm that would have been sung or spoken on the way to the temple for worship, but they are at least as appropriate at this point uh, for Jesus, the Lamb of God, as he enters Jerusalem, ready to go to the cross for us. Palm Sunday is normally a time of celebration, but it's also a time to stop and think. It is also called Passion Sunday. Normally we would be giving out palm crosses to all who came to a church service this day. That symbol of the palm cross reminds us 
of the palms waved in welcome to Jesus and also those that were laid on the ground before him. But it also looks forward to what was to come next at Calvary. In certain church traditions, the previous year's palm cross is burnt on Ash Wednesday at the beginning of Lent, and the sign of the cross is made on the person's forehead with the ash from the burnt cross. There's nothing magic about it, but there is a symbolism that might help us to remember the link between Jesus' life and ministry and his death on the cross. The crowds in Jerusalem would soon turn against Jesus, and he would re-enter Jerusalem in a few short days, this time though escorted not by cheering crowds and his disciples, but rather escorted by Roman soldiers. He was under arrest and heading for a trial of sorts before Pilate, the Roman governor. Yet even this was God's plan that the prophets had foretold and Jesus had taught his disciples to expect. God was in control then, 2,000 or so years ago in Jerusalem, and he is still in control today in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, try to focus on this wonderful truth as we obey our government's instructions to stay home as much as possible. But also remember, our King is still on the throne. Jesus is risen. And of course, we will celebrate that in a week's time on Easter Sunday. But we can also celebrate that every single day of our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us now come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have revealed to us in your word about yourself and about this world in which we live. We thank you that you have known the end from the very beginning. You have your plans and purposes that you set into place, which came to pass most fully in your Son, Jesus Christ, coming into this world, living a life that pointed to you, and ultimately dying that death which paid the price for our sins. Thank you too, Lord, that you raised him from the dead, and now he is seated at your right hand on high. Help us, Lord, to remember that Jesus is risen. Help us to remember that he is king, and that you are in control even now, as you were then, however things might appear. May your blessing be upon us now, and in the days to come. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.